internets. I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game with a review of Game of Trains by Brain Games. So what is it? Well let's look at the box here. We have a train and not a whole lot else and that's because it's a game about trains. It's all in the name there. Very simple. The game itself is also very simple. It's about managing your cards. All you're trying to do is get them from being in descending order into ascending order and then you've won. So why don't we take a look at the table and I can explain how that all works. In Game of Trains, each player starts with their cards in descending order like this, and they need to try and rearrange them to get them in ascending order. So from lowest to highest. Now, the way they'll be doing this is they will take turns either drawing a card off the top of the deck, and then they'll look at it and they'll go, right, I can replace this with one of the cards in my row. So I'll replace it with this four here. So we've got 74 up here, which is really high and a good place to have it. This card then goes into the middle. And the middle is important because the other option for what you can do is rather than drawing off the top of the deck here, you can use the power of these cards. So what do these cards do? Well, let's start with the simpler ones. So here we have a power that if you used would allow you to swap two adjacent cards. But of course, if you use that power, that then goes to the discards and the power's gone. It can't be used by someone else. So let's say we did that though. We swapped these two adjacent cards. And then it was the next player's turn and they want to use another power, but they don't want to use one of the ones here. So they can't, they'd have to draw a new card. But the power they want to use is this one. So they're going to do this. But then this player goes, well, I'm going to use that power. And what this power allows them to do uh, let's just give you a close up there, is to swap two cards where they have one card between them. So in this case, the cards we're going to swap are these two. Then other powers, we've got this one here that will allow you to move a card, two cards along the row, so like so, or this one here, which would allow you to do the same, but in the opposite direction. We've then also got cards with X's on. So the X can be in one of these three spaces and that determines what card gets destroyed. Now, all the other powers only affect your own area. However, when you use one of these powers, so let's say player use this one here, which destroys the middle card. Every player has to dispose of their middle card into the middle of the table. And if you ever get a situation like this in the middle where you've got two of the same power, then they go to the discards. Once the cards have been discarded, starting with the player whose turn it is, each player will take a new card from the top of the deck, blindly placing it in the hole that was left. Now, the other discard powers do the exact same thing, but rather than the middle card, it would be the leftmost card. And if it was the other end, like this one here, then of course it's the rightmost card. So you keep playing like this, taking turns, until one player has managed to adjust all of this, like so, and they have them in ascending order, at which point they immediately win. And that is Game of Trains. So what do I think? Well, let's start with the artwork. I really, really like the artwork on this. It's simple, it's basic, it's very stylized. but I mean, you look at the locomotive, they're nice, and the individual cards, okay, they're not all unique, but there's some really interesting things, you know? It's not just a normal, like, train carriage. You've got a submarine, a time machine. Okay, a normal carriage, but hey, then you've got a plane. And then some raw material, some like precious gems. So it's interesting, it's lively, it's different. I like it. What about the components? Well, all there is component-wise really is these cards. And these are really nice linen finish, high quality cards. No complaints at all, really good. The rule book, well I say the rule book, there's several of them because it's different languages and each one is two languages. I kind of would have liked 
for each one to be a single language. So that rather than folding out to this size, it actually was this size double-sided. That would have been much better, much easier to reference. But as it is, you can just about manage it. You know, you can go, okay, well this abilities bit, that's the only bit I really need open on the table to reference during the game. So we can just have that sat there. So that works kind of okay. So let's talk about the gameplay then. What do I think? Well, it is a very simple game. It's a very basic game. You know, there's not a lot to it. It's take a card, switch a card, or use a power. That's pretty much it. It's nice, it's basic, simple. Anyone can really learn to play this. Now, it's definitely a case of some people are smarter and would be better at it. It definitely plays to that. There is strategy there. But there is also a lot of luck in drawing the right card when you need the right card, what your starting cards are, how easy it's going to be to rearrange or swap in and out in order to get to the right number. So, I actually like it. It's a very light game, very light strategy game. You know, you do feel like your decisions matter, but you can still win by getting lucky. It's the perfect weight for me. And if you know, watch this show a lot, you'll know that I do like that nice, healthy mix of luck and strategy. And yes, the strategy might somewhat times outweigh the luck. But this is a short game, this is a little filler, and it will be over before you know it, and that makes it fine. You can easily just play hand after hand of this. It's nice, it's portable, I really have very few faults with this. Now, other people I've played with have complained that they feel that the luck is more important than the decision making. But this is people who tend to prefer their heavier games, so it's not surprising. So what about player numbers then? Can two play that game? Yes, two can play that game. This works perfectly fine with all the different player numbers. I have tried it with all the different player numbers. I will say because of those discard powers that it does actually change the game how many people you're playing with. Because if you're playing with two people there's much less of that discarding going on, there's much fewer people to do that discarding. Whereas in a four player game, you know, you might find once around at least that someone is forcing a discard to happen. So yeah, it definitely does change, but it's still a good game, good light filler game that works for all the different player numbers. Okay. That is my thoughts on Game of Trains by Brain Games. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, and of course if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And also take a look at us on social media, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.